Uh, I suppose we can get on to Reno. Obviously, the non-conference schedule is behind us. We're excited to get into conference play. Uh, it was a long trip back from from uh, Louisiana, and hopefully our guys got rested up yesterday and are ready to go to work today, and I, I believe they will be. Uh, it's a big week around here. Uh, it's a game we all look forward to, and, and uh, uh, certainly we'll take it will take our best effort this week to, to try to find a win. How, how does this rivalry, now that you've been in both cities there and here, in this rivalry, how does it compare to other rivalries you've been involved with? Uh, you know what? I, it's like the good college football rivalries. The teams don't like each other. The fans don't like each other. They want to win. Um, you know, obviously we're aware of the fact that they've held the, uh, the trophy for too long, and, and we need to fix that at some point, hopefully this Saturday. Is it, is, is it comparable to Montana, Montana State from? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, Oregon, Washington. Um, the one up in Montana is pretty heated. You know, the in-state rivalry games are, are always pretty cool. Um, you know, I've been part of Alabama, Auburn, but I know those people don't like each other much. And that's the way this one seems to me. Is there, how do you, approach this do you try to approach as a different game or do you do something different oh uh, we we tweak things just a little bit nothing that's would astound you <laughs> we we uh we do spend time on uh, i'm sure they do too we spend time on each other in the off season <clears throat> we talk about this game in particular at different times of the year um we'll do some things that that emphasize it whether it's conditioning or spring ball or fall camp um we do an off season study uh, things that you do for your rivalry game. That's nothing unique, but it's that's what we do. Talk about, uh, about our UNR. Yeah, I think they're, they're running back. Talk about Jefferson and, and what he's able to do leading the nation in rushing. And just, he's putting up numbers that are eye-popping. He really is putting up numbers that are eye-popping. You know, obviously, the, the seven touchdowns against Hawaii is phenomenal. It's an NCAA record. You know, when they call it a record, it means it's something outstanding. Um, you know, they, they run the ball well, uh, and he does a great job. The thing that uh, probably I admire most about him is how hard he runs. He's got good ability. He's got good speed. He's got good vision. But uh, he runs really hard. He doesn't go down. Um, kind of like those guys we played last week. They run hard. And, uh, you know, that's the thing I probably admire most about the guy. I was going to say, do you, do you feel like this kind of is a game where yeah well I don't know you know you never know how games are going to play out you just don't and, and it seems like over the years every time you say it's going to be a shootout it's 6-3 and every time you think it's a defensive struggle it's 48-49 but we uh, you know UNLV hasn't had a close game with with Reno in a bit so we uh, we feel like we've got a competitive football team and uh, we want to do whatever it takes to uh, to have a chance in this game. Yeah, you talk about that. You guys able to, able to move the ball at times this year, but on a consistent basis, it hasn't been there full quarters. Yeah, you know, I, as a um, you know as a captain of the offense, I have to you know control it better, not not make so many turnovers, and um, you know see the defense a little better. But I think you know we'll get better this week, and we'll have a good chance against Reno. How excited are you for this game? Obviously, a, a long losing streak on this end. And yeah, you know, I, I got to see it last year, um, and you know, this year it's it's going to be fun. We're excited. I do I do like the fact that he deemed himself emperor of the offense or whatever you just did. <laughs> nice job. For both the players, this, what does rivalry week mean mean to you? Mean to you? Go ahead. Whatever. Um, it's just an it's an exciting time. You know, it's a game that we. It's always on our minds. We're always thinking about it. We're always talking about it. We got a cannon in the locker room that's painted blue, so we, we never forget. You know, it's something that's always on our mind. So, I mean, this week, it's just, you know, it's the big game. You know, it's the granddaddy, you know what I'm saying? So, it's we, we just want to go out there and win and perform and just, you know, give our fans, you know, a good product. And we want to win, ultimately. So, it's an exciting time. Um, yeah, like Lisa said, we, you know, in the offseason, we kind of every you know every once in a while I'll always think about Reno, always think about that game, and make sure it's always in the back of our minds, you know, as we get ready for season to come. And then 
and when it does come, it's you know kind of exciting for everyone. We all you know kind of get pumped up in the locker room, and it's you know it's a fun game. You, you guys walk by the every day in, in practice. You, you see the bikes, the previous winners. Does that kind of sink in with you guys? Absolutely, because I mean I want I want to be remembered as you know especially because I'm a senior. I want to be remembered as one of those teams that beat Reno. You know, it's been a while. I've been here for five years. You know, I haven't seen the Cannon since I've been here. And it's something that obviously has eaten at me. And it's something that I want really bad for this team. And just, I want to leave something for the future for the rest of these guys. So, you know, those plaques are definitely a reminder as far as, you know, we want to win the game. We want to win. Bobby, have you seen the tape of uh, Reno's game on Saturday yet? Yeah, I have. I, I, a lot, lot closer than people would expect. You know, what, what, what did you see? Was it just Cody going out, or you know, what? what do you think uh, you so close? gosh. You know, what, Wyoming played well. Um, you know, when we evaluate the tape, we don't necessarily watch straight running film. We watch a lot of cut ups and such. So we're, especially early in the week, we're spending time on schemes and formations and all that. So it, that's kind of hard for me to answer without watching it as a game, which I'll do later in the week. Uh, but, you know, Wyoming played hard and well, and, you know, they're a good football team too. So, you know, it's, it's a conference game, and, you know, that's the way they go. you you got to play every Saturday in this league if you're going to get a chance to win. Does it affect your preparation that there's uncertainty where the majority will play or not? Uh, nah, not too much, Mark. It, it won't affect it a bunch because they're, they're going to run their offense. Uh, they're they're going to run their offense. And... <clears throat> and kind of in response, to sort of your question, Taylor, it's just they didn't change a lot, half to half, based on the quarterback. So, what is it? I was, was going to say there's no <laughs> way. That's it. I was, no, we were, you almost let, I almost bolted the door back here. I didn't have to. Russ has got me blocked in over there. Go ahead. What is Go it ahead. That, uh, and just in your opinion, as you look through, through over the years, Reno's had a lot of success up there. Why is that? I mean, a tribute to the coach and they get the players, but, but as you see it. Well, I've, you know, getting old now, I've seen them since they joined the Big Sky Conference in the 80s, you know, and listen to my father saying, hey, there's a really good football program in Reno going to the Big Sky. It just made the Big Sky tougher and watched that evolution. And they've done a nice job growing their program just in terms of, what they've done with the facilities and and all the things that they've done up there in that regard. They've done a good job. And then they've had, um, you know, Coach uh, Alt has been, you know, if this rivalry has been played X amount of times, he's probably been involved in it 75%, some form or fashion, coaching somewhere or, or as the athletic director or the head coach. So he, he, he gets that. And, uh, you know, they've just had great continuity up there. He's had his hand in the development of that place since the mid 70s and there's there's a lot to be said for that he's, he's been a coach who's who's adapted over the years he was a used to be a run first <coughs> coach became a passing coach and then developed the the pistol as, as a as a fellow coach what, what does that tell you about him well he's he's obviously experienced smart has has been able to evolve back and forth with uh, both personnel and and what defenses are trying to do with their offense and like I always say about him is, you know, if, if any of us that are in this uh, job call it a career with half as many wins as he's got, we've had a good career. And the fact that he keeps wanting to adapt even now after all he's proven, does that just show why he's been able to last? Well, you know, I think there's a reason why they've gone and gone back to, uh, to he believes in that. It's evident over the years watching their teams, they believe in playing good defense and being physical. and. I think that uh, the years where they were really spinning it a lot, you could say are a little bit of an anomaly now because they've gone back to, to their roots in recent years and they're, they're run, they believe in running the football. I like this game. Do you have any attitudes to it? But being a conference game now and, and what it means, uh, and, and we also found out today about the governor series, you kind of mesh all that together. Well, it <clears throat> I think one of the special things in in all of sports is college football rival game i just think it is and i don't think anything would stir the two teams up anymore i think the gut it's a, I, a, our governor's great and getting involved and having i think that's a really cool deal for both departments obviously and and uh, i think that's a, a great gesture by him to to bring that uh, online uh but just in terms of the football game 
you know, I, I've said it before, if we, if we play these guys in April or we play them in the parking lot at 2 in the morning, you know, our guys are going to get after each other. That's just the way it's going to be. How about the noon kickoff? It's, it's, it's rare to see. Day it's for a Saturday it's afternoon college football game. How about that? It's something you've wanted, It's obviously. awesome. Yeah, I mean, our, our guys will, will absolutely love that. I mean, that's when, in my mind, uh, TV's preference aside and 115-degree days aside, uh, that's when college football should be played. High noon. You said that someone who's been through a lot of these, I, does, does winning potentially, was, would winning this game mean more than <coughs> the conference game? Like, how, how would it feel, do you think? Um, I mean, obviously winning is always the objective, but I mean, I can't lie, to, to beat Reno my senior year, you know, they're they're now in the Mountain West. It would mean it would mean everything, you know. It would be a great feeling, and uh, I, you know, like I said, the objective is to win. But there's definitely more of an incentive because it is our rivalry. You know, you know, we want to we want to beat these guys. So it would be very exciting to win, and we want to win. Is that chippier on the field in these games? Than um, other ones, do you think? In my experience, I think this will be my third time playing. It's definitely chippier. You know, we we don't like each other. You know what I'm saying? I got friends from high school that played for Reno, you know, that went to my high school and we're out there talking trash to each other. So it's like, you know, we, it's chippy, you know, it's a rivalry. You know, we don't like those guys and they don't like us. So it's definitely chippier. Nick, do you have a real sense of this rivalry since you weren't up there last year? And um, yeah, you know, all week coach, he would always tell us about it and tell us, you know, the stories and the background and everything, kind of get us, you know, familiar with it. And I think, you know, after last week, after last year, I got to see, you know, the week of preparation, what the players' attitudes were like, and I, you know, I got a sense of it. What do the older guys, the seniors, tell you about this rivalry? And again, unfortunately, you've been on the, the wrong end of this one, but what do they tell you about this rivalry? That's a big game, you know, that they want to get their uh, their name, like you said, set on that plaque. And, you know, it's huge for our seniors, and we all we want to go out and, you know, win it, win it for our seniors. Coach, you've been around uh, coaches that, that kind of downplay rivalries and don't want to, you know, they hate us, we hate them, that, that kind of thing. There's been some coaches that don't want to like to go that way. But, you, but you're not one of those guys. No, I, I, uh, I, I've always enjoyed the rivalry game. You and I talked about it on the show last night. Some guys, uh, you know, rivalry games, the pressure is immense on coaches, and, and some guys just hate rivalry week. Never been one of those guys, but I, I can understand that, certainly. And, uh, you know, just... Uh, you know, it's 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 a fun. It should be a fun week. It should be exciting. It should be important to everybody on either side of the fence. And uh, um, you know, it, it'll. I hope it's a. I hope it's a great game on Saturday, and I hope we win. Did you refer to Montana State just a state when you were up there, right? That was our players. I get credit for a lot of things our players said up there. <laughs> I get credit for the players shutting the student newspaper out, too. So, you know, whatever. Hey, whatever. <laughs> Let me ask both the players that just kind of follow up. Bobby was never saying been. is to have coaches that, that kind of have that we hate these guys. They don't, we don't like these guys. We want to, these are the guys we want to be. I mean, that's kind of exciting, isn't it, to have a coach like that? I didn't say hate, did I? <laughs> See, I get credit for now what Chris right. says. Yeah, right. <laughs> he this said it. Yeah, I didn't say it. This life. Hate this did life. not. I didn't say it. <laughs> but, it, I mean, that's got to add some fun to the whole thing. Yeah, you know, it's a little, you know, a little, little edge, um, you know, that it gives us. But, it's, uh, you know, it's fun. And we, we both, you know, just our both teams are just excited for it. In response to Kevin's question a minute ago, too, is in terms of the conference game, it does have impact because, you know, if we win this game, that'll put us at 2-0 and top top the conference. So it's it's big in that regard. Coach Houck, you're midway through. Wait, so wait, let me grab you something real quick here. Just talk about that. I won't walk out on you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Coach Houck, he's obviously, when you get to know him, he's a fiery guy. You know what I'm saying? You guys probably don't even know half of it. That's the truth. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's fun. You know, he makes it. He does special things, you know, extra incentives for us to just – you know, keep Reno on our mind. So it is kind of, it's nice to have a coach that, you know, no, never lets us forget. Like what? Because you know, he'll use the word hate, right? To use <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I, you know, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus. But, yeah, I mean, it's fun to have a coach like that. It is. What are the extra incentives? 
You know what? We'll just. Uh, it's, it's all some good. things. It's family business. Yeah, family, exactly. Family business. We love you all, but you guys, you guys are like the, you guys are like the in-laws. Okay, you're not. You're not. You're not in the. Coach, if you're midway through the football season right now, how do you feel your team has been for been performing so far? You know, I I don't like our record. I, I don't like the fact that we only have one win right now. So everything else is is tempered by that. I think we're a vastly improved football team. I think we've played well uh, at different times, but not well enough to win the games that have been on our schedule. So uh, we're proud of beating Air Force, but we're not proud of, of the other games where we haven't come out on top. Do you think you need to, the mistakes have been made the past couple weeks? That's need to clean that up this weekend? Yeah. You know, we, there's things that we've done better week in and week out too, Mark. And, you know, I, I say that the things that we've done the last couple weeks that have cost us the game are, are uh, not finishing drives uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, we have not stopped the run game well enough, uh, along with the big play, a lot of the screen or the, the post against Washington State, the screen against Utah State. And then in the kicking game, we can't have one good play here and one bad play there. We have to be consistently uh, better there. Defense. That's really for me. I'm not a defense. That's really for me. I got you know. That's all right. No, that's good. You can talk about the offense. Yeah. How do you feel the offense? I think he kind of touched on it. You know, just finishing drives, just staying persistent. Uh, you know, we got a, a good young leader with Nick over here to my right. I mean, we just, you know, it's a growing process, but we got to start, you know, kicking it into high gear, I guess you could say. We got to just, especially this week, you know, the big game, we just want to be sharp and just make sure everything's, everything's solid. Nick, you just talk about your progress a little bit. How, how game after game you seem to be improving. Is it slowing down for you a little bit, a little more understanding? I mean, just talk about that. Um, you know, I'm starting to get a little more feel for the offense. The coaches are starting to, you know, get me seeing things that I wasn't seeing before. And... You know, the line is, is giving me more and more time. And, you know, I'm starting to feel where I need to be at in protection-wise and um, where I need to step up. And, you know, I, the I'm just starting to get comfortable with the receivers. You know, we have a good receiving core. I'm starting to, you know, see that. And I think we're, we're improving as an offense. We just need to be stay more consistent. Coach, do you think after playing teams like Washington State, Utah State, Louisiana Tech, do you think there's something you can learn from those uh, high octane offenses for the defense? You know, the, yeah, to a degree. Um, I think the one that may apply the most is, is Air Force. They're pretty high octane too, but high octane in terms of wanting to run it. Uh, they're the one that probably applies the most in terms of prep. Air Force Minnesota probably be the two. Yeah. What do you think of the Cannons? You know, has he been around this rivalry a couple of years or so? You know, <clears throat> Again, rivalry games. It's it's one of those things that uh, if it's if it's uh, a real rivalry, one of them's got to win it once in a while. Being us, so you know we we need uh, we we need to win this game. You know, and if we don't win it this year, then we need to win it next year. But we we we've got to get this thing turned in UNLV's favor, and that's goes back to the question about um, ab about Reno and their their program and their consistency. You know, we need to get to that point here where we have a we, we're restocking the cupboards and we're consistently good year in year out. And obviously, that's not where we've been. Uh, you know, my personal opinion, and I hope shared by most of you guys in the room, is that we're headed that direction. You, the, the trophy itself does it anything like compared to other places you've been? You know, the thing we played for in Montana weighed about 350 pounds, so I, it was pretty big. It took like six linemen to carry it around. So the cannon probably is bigger than that. I absolutely do. If we can get our hands on it, we get well, it's somewhere where our guys will see it every day. Locker room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crack the code. That's right. Yeah. Nick, how did it feel to get those two road games out of the way after playing the first four at home? Now that you've come back home and playing the biggest game of the year? Um, I think it was a different experience. Uh, you know, go on the road. We had to get used to some, you know, adversity just with the plane ride and hotels and just not being at home. But I think, you know, I think we did
quite well for what you know we were given, and I think we're ready for this home game. If you had to guess, <laughs> God, yeah, if you had to so. guess, is the game bigger <laughs> to the little sisters up in Reno, or is it bigger down here? Again, I'm going to get credited for that. <laughs> it's on the microphone. It's big for both teams. It, it's big. I can't. I can't speak to. Their mindset, I don't know it. I've not, not worked there. Uh, I know it's big to us. I like the coach said it. Cut you guys right off. Yeah. <laughs> I can't speak for them, but it's definitely huge to us. Huge. Thanks, guys. Thank you.